G'day. Welcome to Emergency Medicine Topics in One Coffee. I'm Alan Giles, an emergency physician, and today we're going to talk about the clinically important spider bites. Australia is estimated to have over 2,000 species of spiders, but most of them, if they bite you, cause at worst some local pain at the bite site for a short time. But let's look at the clinically important ones. We'll start with the colourful and cute redback spider, and then look at a couple of big, black, hairy spiders, funnel webs and mouse spiders. The redback spider, Latrodectus hasselti, is generally small, only a few centimetres long. It is a characteristic red dorsal stripe, and as with many spiders, only the female is dangerous. It has a certain legendary status in Australia. There was a red back on the toilet seat when I was there last night. I didn't see him in the dark, but boy, I felt his bite. I jumped high up into the air, and when I hit the ground, that crafty red back spider wasn't nowhere to be found. Bites are common, especially in the summer, usually because the web is disturbed. Here you can hear the wonderful David Attenborough describing the lattice web. In Australia, there's a species of spider that has taken web construction a stage further still. It builds not just in two dimensions, but three. It regularly takes up residence in people's backyards and on their verandas. There's one under this plant holder. It's notorious and very venomous, red back. Many bites are mild and only cause mild local pain at the site. Major envenomation is called latrodectism. Here the bite site gets increasingly painful and then the pain extends proximally to involve the lymph nodes of the auxilla or the groin. Often there's local sweating and some mild nausea and a headache. A few people go into significant envenomation with migrating severe pain and sweating. There are two classic presentations that are worth remembering. The first one is a triad of progressive severe pain, marked sweating and piloerection. The second is where there is profuse sweating of the lower limbs bilaterally, even if the bite was elsewhere. And I've been involved in a case like this a few years ago, and it's quite bizarre. So what about treatment? Look, a cold pack may sometimes help with, along with simple analgesics. Don't use any tourniquets or pressure bandages, please. And unlike snake bites, there's no test to prove that you've been envenomated with a redback spider. We rely on the history and clinical signs. And there is an antivenom, and I've used it both intramuscularly and intravenously. But after a decade of controversy, it's completely out of favour, following the RAVE trials by Jeff Isbister. Now, RAVE 2, the second trial, was a 224 patient, multi-centered, randomized, placebo-controlled trial that did not show a clinically meaningful decrease in pain or systemic symptoms. They used two vials intravenously of either placebo or the antivenom. Interestingly, antivenom is accepted therapy for severe envenomation with black widow spiders in the USA. Black widow spiders are the same family as our redback, that is Latrodectus, and cause a very similar clinical syndrome. You'll still find some toxinologists that will consider using IV redback antivenom in severe or rare life-threatening cases. One thing to tell patients who are bitten is worth remembering is that symptoms may linger on for a few days and really up to a week. Oh yeah. And uh, don't do this, it doesn't work. Now let's look at BBSs, big black spiders. Funnel webs and mouse spiders being the most important. Funnel webs are found in parts of eastern and southeastern Australia, often in the backyard, and occasionally in pools when, after rains, the males wander around at night looking for a mate. This is usually between about February and May, but maybe much earlier. The bite of a funnel web is painful, 
and although the majority of bites will prove to be minor, they can be potentially life-threatening. Often, ooh, the spider will hang on and have to be brushed off. Ugh. The initial symptoms of envenomation may develop as fast as 10 minutes, but they certainly will occur if they're going to within the first four hours. The early symptoms are perioral tingling with or without tongue fasciculations. Now, here's an example of tongue fasciculations in a patient who hasn't been bitten by a spider, but has in fact had an organophosphate overdose. Um, but it can show you what fasciculations look like. Unsurprisingly also, there may be headache, nausea, vomiting, along with abdominal pain. I try to think of the syndrome as being a, sort of a combination of autonomic stimulation and a catecholamin storm. So autonomic stimulation causes lacrimation, sweating, salivation, and piloerection. Then there's the tachycardia, hypertension, and muscle fasciculation. This can progress in very serious cases to pulmonedema, agitation, respiratory, and then even cardiac arrest. Think of the treatment like you would treat a snake bite. Initially, you mobilize the limb and put on a pressure bandage. Now, there's no blood test or local test for a funnel web bite, so your decision to use antivenom, which is easily available or relatively easily available, will be dependent on symptoms. If there are autonomic, those cardiovascular and neurological symptoms, then give two vials of antivenom. Dilute them in 100 mils of normal saline and give intravenously over about 20 minutes. If the symptoms are not resolving in about 30 to 60 minutes, give another two vials. And remember always to link in with the Poison Information Centre, which is 13 11 26, for advice and ongoing assistance. If there is severe envenomation, right from the very beginning, start with four vials, along of course with all supported resuscitative measures. Incidentally, if the patient has no symptoms after a bite and remains so for four hours, the pressure bandage can be removed, the patient observed for a further two hours, then if asymptomatic, they can be safely discharged. Also, if you have a patient that has had some antivenom for some mild to moderate symptoms and is admitted, say, to a short stay unit overnight, then discharged, they should have oral steroids prednisone 50 milligrams a day for five days to decrease the effect of serum sickness, which generally occurs about five to 10 days after administration of an antivenom. To finish off, I'll say a few words about the mouse spider. Named because it was thought its burrow could be as deep as a mouse's, which can be up to a couple of feet. It isn't. Now looking at it, you can see how a bite by an eastern mouse spider can be easily mistaken for a funnel web especially as it's found in about the same geographical area. Also, the mouse spider has similar toxins to a funnel web, but it appears that only about 2.5% of mouse spider bites are severe, compared to about 10 to 25% in funnel webs. We don't really know why that is. Treatment should follow those of a suspected funnel web spider bite, although it's unlikely you'll have to use an antivenom, and if you were considering it, I would ring 13 11 26, as they'll give you advice directly or link you to a toxinologist. Well, I think they'll just about do for the clinically important spider bites, all in one coffee. Good luck keeping spiders out of your dreams. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.